It's Palm Sunday. I hope you're excited, but what the heck is Palm Sunday? Well, it's when we celebrate this time that Jesus rode into Jerusalem on a donkey and people lost their minds. They said, Hosanna in the highest. They laid down palm branches and cloaks, and they were really excited that Jesus was on a donkey. Why? What does any of this mean? Well, I'm glad you asked, because that's exactly what we're talking about this week. Kindred UMC live show features adults discussing adult topics, occasionally with adult language. It may not be suitable for young viewers. Please use discretion before watching. Hello all. Welcome once again to the Kindred UMC pre-recorded live show coming to you not live, but pre-recorded from my front room, AKA Kindred Studio A. My name is Chris Hayden. I am the pastor of Kindred UMC. My name is Anne and I'm the treasurer for Kindred UMC. And my name is Andrew. You've probably seen me by now, but I do things. Andrew's cocky. Yeah, <laughs> that's what my shirt tells me. Andrew might not be cocky, and he's just wearing a short shirt to help him feel a little more cocky. And so I fit in better <laughs> with with the roosters. Conversation oh. with the roosters, yes, indeed. They do. They can read, and they recognize themselves on shirts. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> as we yeah, all they know. They give me a little nod when they see it. They're like, "Oh yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. right." He's one and of they, us. They flap that little flap thing. <laughs> Like an emo. <laughs> uh, it is. It's not today, but it will be when this comes out. Palm Sunday! Yay! Does anybody know what Palm Sunday is? You heathens? That's the one where Jesus rode in on a donkey. An ass! On an ass! Yeah, we're, yeah, We're allowed to say ass. Woo! Woo! Come at me, Bishop. I'm allowed to say ass. It's an ass. <laughs> it's in the Bible. Yeah, right? Yes! <laughs> Um, but he rides in on the donkey and I don't remember. Oh, there's like an old thingy. Where Why do they, they call it Palm Sunday? Because they lay the palms down for him to, yeah. but that's, that's a reference to something. It is. Um, We're going to talk about it. Yeah. Good. Cause I don't remember where the reference came from, but it had well, to do with like good things. Yes. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, they weren't like boo. And it was yeah, it was. <laughs> boo! These palms are just so you know you're not welcome. <laughs> no, it wasn't that. It was the opposite. Well, yeah, no, I meant it had to do good things for like the people because like the it was it, the, we're gonna have a king come and like we're gonna, you're like you're, attack. Yeah, you're you're. Or like I think you watched last year, last year's. I might have recorded it. Because I kind of do the same thing every year because it's because <laughs> it's Palm Sunday. Because it's Palm Sunday. It's like Easter. What are you gonna preach on on Easter? Genesis? Like, no, you're going <laughs> to preach about the resurrection. Like, that's what happens. Same thing with Palm Sunday. You're going to preach about Jesus riding in on a donkey with palms. So, yes, you're, you're in the right area, and we will talk about it. One year, you should just mix it up and do, like, the Christmas sermon on Easter, and then you can do the Palm Sunday so, sermon on, like, President's Day. My previous appointment, which was a much more traditional church, I did, uh, I did like the week of was the sermon series for Lent. And so I, I basically did from Palm Sunday to Easter. And I started Ash Wednesday or the Sunday right after Ash Wednesday. I started with Palm Sunday. Let me tell you, there were more than a couple of people who were upset by that. <laughs> you don't know the order of the Bible, pal. Yeah. It's like, hey man, I'm, I promise we're going to get there, but like a lot of stuff happened that one week. It's kind of the, I don't know, basis of our entire faith, all the things that happened right there in that one week. So anyway, uh, so yes, we're going to talk about Palm Sunday. Uh, and, uh, let's just get into it. It's, it, I'm going to, so it's in all the gospels, all four of them. We're going to look at Mark cause that was the first one that was written. Uh, and we're, it's, it's Mark one, 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 one. It's Mark 11, 11. one through 11. <laughs> Mark one, 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 one. So that's the easy way to remember the, uh, par, the Palm Sunday scripture in Mark anyway. So Mark 11, one through 11 sound like this. When they were approaching Jerusalem, this is Jesus and all his disciples. When they were approaching, oh, go back. No, oh, 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 no, uh, what's happened? It does this to me now. It went, it went back all the way to Jeremiah. <sighs> Jeremiah just felt left out. Well, that's, that's this, the prophecy that I read last week. Um, the New Testament. What, give me, oh gosh, I hate this. You're, why are you? Why would you do this to me right now? I'm gonna edit all this out. We need Brandon to be your stand. All right, Mark 11. 
Mark 11, 1 through 11, and they sound like this. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany, those are just places, uh, near the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt, which is a young donkey. They say colt, that's a horse, I don't know why. Anyway. Uh, you will find there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Just say this. The Lord needs it and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, what are you doing untying the colt? And they told them what Jesus had said. And they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it. And he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches, palms, leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead of, uh, and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven! Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple, and when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. So, questions, comments, concerns, observations? So they just, like, stole that donkey. donkey. That's right. And if anyone asks, you say the Savior needs it. The Messiah needs it. I'll keep that in mind. Yeah. So, yeah. So, this is, so what I want you to get from this is this is permission to carjack. Yeah. <laughs> That's, oh, sorry. The Lord needs this the Lamborghini. The Lord needs <laughs> as use of this Chevy. Yeah. It's like Blues Brothers. It's for the penguin. <laughs> Dated <laughs> reference. Well, I'm, the I'm oldest, old. <laughs> I'm the oldest one here, and that was old for me. Oh, get out of here. Um, shout out to Jeff Kofer, my good friend who loves Blues Brothers. Uh, so, okay. So, I think there are three major questions that stand out that most people have. Let's start with the simplest one. Does anyone know what Hosanna means? No. No. Okay. All right. Pick up I the think, pace, man. We're I running think out of it's time. Something, I <laughs> think it's... We I, needed the Jeopardy like, music. I know I've heard it before, which is why I hesitated. It was something like... Um, like it, I think it's referring to God or Jesus or something like it that. It is. Yeah. Co- yeah. It, I'll leave it at that. So before it, so I, it literally means it God saves. It means the Lord saves. Hosanna means God save us, basically. And so what we talked about earlier when we talked about um, the the last two uh, videos, go check them out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I make Anne do all the links for that um so uh when you go check go check those out there it's during the festival of booths and one of the rituals because they were they were concerned they were going into winter they were concerned about water and so one of the rituals was the priest would pour water and wine over the altar and all the people would chant hosanna god save us in that particular ritual they're saying like god send rain god save us from starvation it became a, a very politically like pointed statement and it and it took on new meaning in the era of Roman oppression God save us but specifically from Caesar from Rome and it took on a political meaning Hosanna was like overturn Rome overturn Caesar so the fact that they're chanting this as Jesus is coming into Jerusalem during the Passover. I don't know if I mentioned that. This is all happening during the Passover, which is... The, we talked about the Festival of Booths. This is the Festival of the Passover. So it's like the next one in the season. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> so Jesus is coming in during Passover, and they're saying, Hosanna, overturn Rome overturn like that's the meaning of hosanna okay so uh palms we already kind of talked about palms does anybody else, do, do you do you have any other I- insights into palms so uh, there's nothing really magical or, or kind of all that interesting it, it was just a traditional way of welcoming a king home but it should be noted this is how they would have welcomed Rome uh, or uh, Caesar into Rome. 
they would welcome Caesar by laying down their cloaks and putting palm branches and and anyone of import like any royalty any general any like anyone who was important that's what roman citizens would have done and it's important to note jerusalem is under rome it like the the roman empire jerusalem's part of it so all the people are laying down the things that they would lay down for caesar if he was coming home from war so that's what the palms are all about and they're, and they're also waving them, and that, like that's what we do in the church now. We we wave palms and do that kind of thing. And they do it at UCF basketball games when they're trying to make free throws to distract them. Oh, really? <laughs> they wave palm fronds. Is it? It's a. It's a like a. Oh, what do they call it? Uh, something warfare. Uh, whatever. Look it up. You, I can't think of it. <laughs> um, so yes. Uh, this is this is much more of a this is not a distraction this is a celebration um okay now the other th- the third thing i think we have to consider is the donkey the savior's ass why in the world would this savior come in on a donkey does anybody n- understand or know or are you kind of were getting at it because i talked about it last year like i always do the thing that comes to mind to me is like You know, we're talking about how this is being contrasted with how, like, a king would be welcomed home. I imagine a king would be coming home on, like, a war horse, a stallion, that kind of thing. A chariot, something. Something something big and beautiful and ornamental. So that's, there's certainly an element of that, um, but it goes even deeper than that. So in order to understand the donkey, we have to go back. So this happened around 33... uh, I always want to say AD because I grew up in that era, uh, 33 uh, CE. In order to understand this, we have to go back 500 years from there to a, about 520 C, uh, BCE. So there are there's these two prophets, Haggai and Zechariah, and they both they they both were good prophets. They made the Bible, but they're minor prophets because they're short, um, and so. They, they both included very specific dating information in their prophecies and in, in their books that they wrote. And so we actually have a very confident understanding. Like it's when we say 520, it's not like the other Bibles, uh, the other books in the Bible. When we say 520, we're pretty dang sure it's 520. Like, cause they, cause they reference, they made so many specific, like the era of this king, so-and-so of this, like, it, like we know pretty much it was 520. They were both came out at the same time and circulated at the same time. And it's important to know this is before there was like a Bible. So there wasn't like, like they, nobody had canonized all this stuff yet. But these two prophets, these two Israelite Hebrew prophets, circulated their prophecies, and they both talked about this coming Messiah. So during 500, it was during the Babylonian exile, they, like Israel had been conquered. <clears throat> so a lot of prophecies came out about God is coming to save us. God is coming to save us. Specifically, Haggai and Zechariah had two very different images for the coming Messiah. So Haggai described uh, his prophecy is all about like, <clears throat> Israel's got to get back to like rebuild the temple, reestablish our strength and our power. And once we do that, the Messiah will come and he will come with a sword in his fist to take vengeance and to judge all of those who are not enough to judge all of those uh, enemies that we've faced, to judge all of the, uh, the, the faithful who were unfaithful, all the Israelites who didn't come to build the, pro- the, the temple. God is coming with a sword in his fist to cut the, the wheat from the chaff, the, like the strong from the weak, like that's, and that's the image he gives. Zechariah, on the other hand, his prophecy image is about peace, and grace and reconciliation. And he says the Messiah is coming, but will bring peace. will restore us all back to God. will bring like, and, and it's this, it's, it's a much more gentle approach. It's much more filled with grace and mercy. And so there's this debate, which of these prophets, cause they're, they're totally like against each other. Which of these prophets is right? Which one it, how is the Messiah going to come? 
on this app. The image that Zachariah uses to, to like as a metaphor to, dis, to, to represent the, the Messiah coming humbly, the Messiah who brings peace and reconciliation and brings grace and mercy to everyone. The image he uses, he will come on a cult, the foal of a donkey. So Jesus isn't doing this on accident. It's not like 500 years ago, some stranger made a prediction and then it happened to be that Jesus did this. And oh my gosh, it turns out that guy knew the future. That's not what's going on. Jesus is a rabbi. He understands the debate. He knows that people are going, how's it going to be? Is, is the Messiah going to come with a sword in his fist to defeat Rome, to kill Caesar, to bring us back to power so that we can be a war force in this area? Jesus knows the debate. And there's this question, because Jesus has done all this work and all these signs, there's this question, what kind of Messiah is he? Well, who is he going to be? And he says, go get a donkey. He, so, he tells his disciples and he rides in humbly on a colt, the foal of a donkey. He's making a statement to the entire city of Jerusalem. The Messiah has come to bring grace and forgiveness and peace and reconciliation. I am not a conquering, vengeful God. I was sent here, as he has said multiple times, I was sent here not to condemn, but to save, to include, to expand the boundaries of the kingdom of heaven. There is one God who loves everyone and you are invited to the table. That's the meaning of Palm Sunday. And, and that's why the people go, like, they go nuts. That's why they're excited. That's why they're rejoicing. Because this means that God is for us and not against us. That is the meaning of Palm Sunday. So, I want to ask you, have you ever felt, <laughs> have you ever encountered the message of God being wrathful and vengeful or God, or maybe the opposite. Have you, like, have you ever really experienced this, this grace and this humility? Like what comes to mind for you uh, when you think about God coming humbly when God could have come with a sword in his fist? I think it's a weird uh, connect maybe, but that's like my whole life. I live with a two-year-old and there is this moment of, and especially two, two-year-olds are special little people. They have emotions <laughs> like teenagers and they can't tell you we, all about we them. We witnessed them recently. Oh yeah. <laughs> on full display. <laughs> and that wasn't even that bad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but there is this moment I always get where... nervous because our whole house oh, is yeah. tile. We have like <laughs> rugs here and there and he really likes to just throw his skull on the ground. And it's like, dude, okay, <laughs> stop. <laughs> You're hey. going to need that later. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, hopefully. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you know, there are moments where, you know, I would love once in a while to just really not nicely <laughs> explain Cut some things to him. <laughs> with a sword in my fist. <laughs> explain some things. But I figured very quickly that's you're you're not winning in that situation so many times so many times i try like in once in a while nobody's perfect all right like i ended up screaming one time when i didn't mean to and you could just see it he after that he yeah, just join the club we've got jackets yeah right exactly <laughs> but you could just tell the difference in how he treated it like it didn't make it better it made the situation worse in the yeah. long run like it didn't we didn't get move forward we kind of ended up still button heads but if we sit down and we can explain like there was just a lot more progress if we can sit back and be like okay like let's take a minute let's see where we're at like and it's there is something to that you know i can come at you with some force i am bigger than you and i can make you do it but yeah. that's only going to get me so far right. like it's better if we work together and work you through this. It, let me teach isn't, you something. Yeah. Isn't that such a, uh, I, I identify it is a temptation. I think it's, it's, it is a fundamental human. So, uh, so like John wick, John wick 
has had such success as a movie because of the fantasy of what if I could just just go in with brute force and make everyone. Um, Taken is another one. Oh yeah, it's like yeah, this yeah. Hyper like uh, it, it, I mean, and don't get me wrong, I like these movies. I enjoy watching them. Yeah. Um, but they are they are that fantasy. What if I could just? What if I was just absolutely in control? Even when things are out of control, I have the skills to make them come into control. You take my daughter in a, in a country that's on the other side of the world, I will come find you and get her. Like, I, the, there is no such thing as a dangerous situation for me. And like right. that's, and John Wick is the same. And like, there's this, I come with a sword in my fist. I will, I will impose justice. You get what you deserve, period. And like, it is just not, it's not the nature of creation. It's not the nature of human beings. We do not do well in that. We fail and we separate and we isolate and it just it turns out to be a really bad way for us to be, which is counterintuitive because it, so, it, it is so attractive and it sounds so effective and it's absolutely not. And like there must be grace or we don't thrive. Uh, sorry, I'm gonna throw in there. I'm not gonna lie, if somebody took my kid I think I would be coming at him with a sword in my hand. I'd have a hard time well, not to. Well, absolutely. You would try to, but there the, but I'd but fail, there'd right? be a powerlessness there. <laughs> there would and be. Like that is, I'd be paralyzed. That's yeah. why we need grace. Like yeah, that's that, true. Th because we don't have the ability and the means to impose that kind of thing. And yeah. and like it's it's good news that God who does doesn't, doesn't use do it. Doesn't do it. <laughs> like, because like that, and that is the good news of Easter. Like God who has the means instead says let me take your place you know <laughs> like let yeah. me go in your stead so that you can join me even though you don't deserve it i want you and i love you and i, I find something still inherently valuable in your existence even though you screw up all, like often and god knows we do like that's the message of christianity that that god not just like is reluctantly like i guess i'll do like but god's like please please come with me into heaven please join me in this way of being that is gracious and loving and inclusive please come with me take my hand it, like that's the good news of the 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 savior who comes humbly you know like yeah. the savior isn't coming to condemn and judge all right so uh, sorry what were you gonna say yeah um i was just gonna say that, that the question in the story in general sort of made me think about like contrasting it with another time the israelites were you know under harsh rule with egypt and and god kind of did come with a sword with the so plagues it's and everything. literally taking place during the passover yeah yeah <laughs> right. the final plague is the passover yeah. you know like yes so, yeah, keep, so it's keep all going. connected um but but yeah god sort of did come with a sword then and, and strike down the enemies and yes. sort of force them to to free the israelites um and it and it sort of makes me think about how in general the old testament that you know god tends to be more more vengeful and, and all of that and and it does sort of feel like yeah god kills a guy for <laughs> steadying the ark <laughs> like he re like it's about to fall and he reaches out and touches it and God's like bam dead. Yeah. It's like whoa. It's just like look what I can do. That's a different. Yeah. That's not the way Jesus talked about you. I like what yeah. the heck happened there. But it does sort of feel like I don't know maybe that God learned and grew. I I, I don't know if that's so, the case, but Here's how I would put it. And this is why I always have to take a minute to make fun of biblical literalists. <laughs> Don't read the Bible literally. It's bad for you. No. I promise. It's, you. it's bad for you. So it, my view of Scripture is, so we have, to, we have to understand Scripture was written by human beings who were doing their best to understand the nature of God. And certainly the, the Holy Spirit is involved in that. And, and, and that's, why we, that's why these texts like survive and ha still have resonant meaning even now, like, like they mean something. But I think the way we should be reading scripture is an ancient people trying to relate to gods. And gods are petty, and why would they give any care at all to your stupid little life? You know, like he, this dumb Andrew guy. Like, I'm going to play <laughs> with him. He's insanely funny to just like mess with, you know, like that's how people understood gods. And the Old Testament starts there. Like it has to start where people start. 
Right. And it moves the idea of who God is gradually from this petty, vengeful thing into a, the, a gracious, universal deity who is the only God above all gods, creator of everything. Like that's, those are all radically new, incredibly world changing ideas. Like God, there's only one God. Like that alone is a radical revolutionary idea that God cares about me is like incredibly new, you know? Uh, so like if we read the Bible, not so dang literally, and we look at what's actually happening is the evolution of people beginning to understand the underlying grace of creation, the underlying force of God that is moving us from chaos into order, from selfishness into community, from isolation into like genuinely belonging, you know? Like that's, that's what, and so that's why some of the Old Testament stories are like completely screwed up. Like there's guys who are giving their daughters over to be raped in order to help the like hospitality things work out. It's crazy. But when you read it like that and you look at the overarching trajectory of it, you find that the apex of understanding who God is happens at the death and resurrection of Jesus. God loves us and gives his son so that we don't have to be perfect and we can still join God in a perfect communion with everyone else, by the way. People miss that. It's not just about joining God. It's about joining everyone else, too. Like, stop excluding people, you jerks. Like, that's the main thing that God is, like, like that this whole Jesus thing is about stop excluding everyone from the kingdom of heaven. Everyone is invited. Everyone should have a seat at the table. Jeezy crazy. I don't know why that's such a controversial statement these days. I'm getting so much backlash from insisting on this. So weird to me. Anyway, like, yes, communion with God, which can happen now, not after death, can happen now. And communion with everyone else can happen now. We can be in heaven now. And as I've often said these days, we can also be in hell if we choose not to. Like we, we have that choice. The God gives us this opportunity and that's the nature of grace. Like God, God wants us in, but he's not forcing us in. Right. You know, God, God wants us to be a part of it, but you get to choose. And that's just the, that's, it, it's, it's a little weird. And I, that's a whole nother sermon. It's like a hellish choice to be offered, you know, but it's like, it's actually not that hard of a choice. Like, God is gracious. Receive God. God wants you in. Be in. Start loving the people that you have a hard time loving. Do your best. You know, like yeah. God and God is gracious. You're going to screw it up. God is gracious. Accept the grace, accept the forgiveness. It's there for the taking. You can love instead of hate. You can include instead of exclude. It's part of it's like it's part of the intrinsic grace that's moving us forward. It's part of this Holy Spirit thing. Kingdom of heaven is at hand. It's at hand. And good news, God came humbly on a donkey. Like God didn't come with a sword in his fist to to smite you. God came on a donkey to include you, to to love you, to make sure you have a place. Any final thoughts? All righty. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. 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 Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday.